yeah okay <clears throat> today what we will see we will see the jvm architecture so every time we are discussing heap stack all those things right method class objects correct static variables all those things right. so where these uh, variables will be saved exactly and th this architecture is very very important to understand okay how so if you want to write effective programming so mm -hmm. how the everybody can write the program but how much effectively the code will work the i mean you will get the results how much time it will take so that is the matter right right how much space how much memory it will take so that is the matter so why because if you see your machine meaning your laptop or anything so you have a less memory like uh, ram maybe 4 gb 5 gb 10 gb 12 gb something like that you will not get uh, terabytes of ram right right you may get order of gbs it's a matter right we have less ram size so we have to utilize that one very properly right the similar way here also we have a memory so how to utilize the memory and how to write the program effectively then <clears throat> that will be the good program so before writing the program we need to understand the architecture architecture of the i mean uh, <coughs> jvm so we will see the inside the jvm we have a different blocks and for each block is having a unique function unique main function so how it will deal how the program how it will support the execution of the programming okay that we will see okay let me write something that is your note yes so this is your note so this note you got right as part of the last class right okay fine so i'm going to keep one more heading jvm yes now we will open where is that image yes this is the image <coughs> see you see right first what you will do to write a program first right you will write a simple java class correct right java file after that what you will do you will sorry you will compile the class correct right Java file means Java project. Right? Java to dot class file. Correct. Mm -hmm. So far we know how to do. I mean, I mean how you are compiling this class. We are using the uh, inside the bin folder. You see the Java C dot exe. So we are using that one. We are trying to compile the class. Correct. Yes. So so far we know how to write the Java class. Now how to convert that Java class to dot class file we know that one. after that what we are doing we are doing right click from the eclipse and we are running that one correct right click on the eclipse and run as a java programming or we are using java command java and file name we are giving and we are getting the results correct right so ultimately we are trying to use dot class file to to run and to see the results correct right so for instance we have a java class class files dot class files okay whenever you are running that uh, java command so what it will do there is a class loader subsystem is there what it will do it will try to read the all the dot class files available in that location meaning what you will do cmd what you will do here java hyphen a you will do press enter correct so right now here 
there is no class if it is there what is what you will do it will execute the main class right main method sorry mm -hmm. it will execute the main method and it will give the results correct so what it will do inside the location if you see here c users del correct so inside this location it will try to load the, all the dark class available what are the dark classes are available it will try to load into the memory in this particular location from wherever you are running mm -hmm. so right now in this location there is no dark class but if in case if it is there it will try to load it will try to load all the dark class files into the memory so that particular system we used to call as a class loader okay so how it will load it's a matter say for instance we have two classes okay let me open eclipse it's a matter basically the class loader is having some hierarchy it's a dependency say for instance you have written a class called a okay so this a class is depend on two other classes x and y correct okay. mm -hmm. so what it will do first it will try to load the class a and then it will look for the dependencies if there is any dependency is there i said x and y right so it will try to look for that classes dependencies A dependency file dependency file yes dependency classes then it will try to load all the dependency classes into the memory see here see here string builder is your class correct right after that if you whenever you are trying to execute main class what is the dependence class here it's a string builder it's a it is one of the dependency class right right so what it will it will try to load this dark class files into the memory okay so this is the work for class loader See there. Okay. So it will try to uh, load the all the uh, class loaders, I mean dependent classes, into the memory. Okay. This is the main block which will load the all the dark class files and relate to dependent classes. Okay. Now your class is ready. <clears throat> okay. And um, so you have a definitely you have a main class right what is this class called a a is the main class we are assuming here correct which is having public static void main method mm -hmm. meaning this is the main method correct right. so this is a static block correct right so what jvm will do whatever the class you are trying to run like this right click we are doing run java application right then jvm what jvm will do jvm will try to call this method this is the class name and this main method is we are giving always main only we are not going to change it right if you change it it will say it will not execute your program so for instance i am going to change this main method to key now i am trying to execute it let's see what will happen did you see the run as java application no nope. So, because the main method is always fixed, so JVM is JVM will look for this method. If it's you, it's a default. We have to write main only. If you change that name, then JVM will not able to run your program. Why? Because class name dot main method it will call. Why? Because this is a static. So it's it will not create an object. Class name dot main. Then it will try to execute all the lines correct right so that's what jv will trigger this program if there is no main method then jvm is not able to do anything with your program at least one j at least one main method is required that particular class is a initiator or trigger of your application yes so that way jvm will help you to start your program <clears throat> okay so far it's clear right right okay now we will enter inside the blocks <clears throat> first we will see the heap so far we are discussing right heap 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 
correct right so this is the heap block so here what it will do whenever you are creating an object in your main method mm -hmm. so that objects will be saved over here yeah uh -huh. there are two different places right yes yes this is a heap inside the heap there may be like we discussed right um what is it two blocks uh, constant way heap non-constant heap correct right mm -hmm. Constant heap and non-constant heap, like a string s equal to a b c, that will be saved into the constant heap side. Right. String s equal to new string, that will be saved into the non-constant uh, heap. Right. Because so it will be split into two parts. Mm -hmm. So that we saw as part of the string class. Correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. This this block is clear, right? I think we had already verified this one previously. Right. The okay. first thing is comes the main method, the overload, uh, the class load subsystem, yes. which is main method. Within that method, whatever the object is created is being um, performed there. Saved all. Correct. Yes. Yes. The main method. And yes. then after that, the method uh, is comes to the heap, or is like that depending on the location how you are creating an object. Yes. yes. That there it will be saved. Okay. Now I will explain you the stacks. This is very important block. I can tell you, I can give you so many real time examples for stack, how it will work. I can show you in our operating system also. Okay, let me right here. Okay, let me write a simple Java program so that it will give more sense. So, just I'm trying to create a uh, <clears throat> new Java project called JVM. All right. Shit. So here I am going to write a one more simple class called JVM demo. <clears throat> so, uh, so what I'm telling here, we are going to discuss about stack, stacks, right. Java stacks, Java stacks means, so if you see one biscuit packet, so how you will open the biscuit packet, yeah, it, it is look like this, right, correct, inside that you will see the biscuits, correct, right. So generally what you will do, you will try to remove the this one, correct? Then you will try to take out each time one 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 out, correct? Right. One one one. This is the general way we used to do, correct? Right. So just this is the way to take out. Okay, just assume while they're inserting the biscuits, what they will do first they in, they might have insert this one first one. Right. Second, third, and fourth. And while coming out, which one is will the come out first? The last inserted one will be the first, correct? Right. So this one we used to call it as a last in first out. Last in first out. Right. Okay. Correct? Mm -hmm. So which one is the last inserted one that will be coming out first? Correct? Right. So we are not going to take the this one first time, correct? Right. Okay. So that is called last in first out. First out. Mm -hmm. Last in first out. Okay, if you see here if I if I press control Z, so which one got removed? Last one. Last one. So this is an algorithm. Control Z. So it was implemented based on this simple mat, I mean algorithm. Last in, first out. So whatever you are typing here, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever I am typing here. So this uh, operating system, you can say uh, Windows. So they are also using kind of stack. Means the in initially there is empty box is there. So first what I did, I typed this one, right? Right. Okay. I typed this one, correct? Say for instance, now one, two, 
three, four. Now I typed one, two, three, four, right? What is the last care I typed? Four. Four, right? So while inserting the into the stack, right? What it will do? One, two, three, four. So when I'm trying to, if I press Control Z, which one will be removed? Four. So this is a last in first out algorithm. So even Windows operating system also will follow that kind of rule only. Control Z. I to uh -huh. complete the stack, to complete the work. Okay, in our JVM also we are using this algorithm and how we are using, I mean I will give you a simple example. So first you understand right last in first out? Right, right, I understand. Okay, now if you press control Y then again you will get first in last out. Okay. So whenever you are pressing control Z last in first out so this is an example of yeah. algorithm last in first out yeah is it control y right yes okay Got it. so last in first out say here i am going to write a simple method here m1 public void m This one I can say here M1. Say for us three methods. Mm -hmm. This is M2 you can see. This is M3 you can see. And just assume here static methods. Just to make it easy. Clear? So just I have written simple three methods, correct? Right. Can you, uh, uh, just one second. Mm -hmm. I just want to know that this shortcut. When you highlight all of them, then mm -hmm. you press F or what is it to make it the alignment is active? Oh, that's one. Just select everything. Control Shift F. Oh, Control Shift. Just to make it alignment, format, formatting the code. Control Shift F, format. Oh, okay. So I don't have to do it everything manually, right? Yeah, no, don't do. Just follow the shortcut. Say, for instance, if this is so, it is there here. It's not in format, right? It's not in its alignment way. Then first select all the code. Control A. Now code is selected. Control Shift F. Then save the code. Okay. So even the. Okay. The bracket so and everything. Will be everything saved. it will be saved. If you don't like that alignment, if you don't like this for formatting standards, you can change that. You can able to change it. So that we have to go here, Windows, Preference. There is a formatter. You'll see here. Mm, okay. So this one, you, you have to give your own styles. So you can customize it. Yes, yes, Java formatter. If you say this is the standards, if you don't like this one, then you have to customize it. I want so you have to export your own standards. First, what you have to you have to import it. Right, okay. import into your right. desktop, then modify that XML and upload it back again. Okay. Import and export. So okay. that way you can able to change the styles you can able to see the styles here if you are trying to i mean export a new style a standard xml after modifying it, it will show the styles over here how it look like a sample program oh okay yeah so that way you can modify your own styles by default it is having its own style if you don't like you can modify as per your wish if you if you, if you want bracket like this okay control shift f okay got yes it. then you can it will modify like this. Okay, now we have a M1 and this is M2 and this is M3, correct? Right. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm calling M1 from main method. Can I? Mm -hmm. This is clear, right? I'm calling M1 from main method. Okay, I'm calling M2 from M1. 
I'm calling M3 from M1. So, give me a second. I have this method, right? Yes, just see here. First main method will be executed, correct? Mm -hmm. From main method, I'm calling which method? M1. From M1, I'm calling which method? M2. From M2? Are you calling M3. Yes, correct. I'm not calling anything. From M3, M nothing. Finish it. No, there is no call from M3. Okay. So now, how the stack will be found from JVM side? So, first, which method we have to execute? Main method, correct? Right. Yeah, here, main method. That's the first one. First. Main. Okay. From main method, which method you are calling? M method one. M1. M1. From M1, which one you are calling? M2. From M2, which method you are calling? M3. From M3, are you calling anyone? No. No. So to Can come, I call back method one? If you will call, okay, that we will see later. First, make it simple, okay? That also, I, even I will I will give that example. That will create a problem, but I first I want to show you a simple example. Okay, sure. If from M3, are you calling anyone? M3, no. No. So, I want to clear this one. How you will clear this stack? First, which one you have to remove? M3. Correct. Correct. So, first, what it will do, it will try to execute the M3 method first. Okay. <clears throat> okay. First, it will try to execute the M3 method. Okay. After that, which one it will try to execute? M, uh, M2. M2. After M2. that? M1. M1. The finally it will finish the remaining part of main method. So, so I will tell you main method start. Okay. This is the main method start. And let me give one more sysout main method ending. So this is the last statement in end. Correct? Right. And let me add here M1 end. And here, what is this line? M2 end, correct? Right. And here is start and end, correct? Here, we don't have only one line. Start and end. Okay, now what I will do, I will execute it. And let's see which method will be completed first. As per our stack, which which, which one will complete first? As far as the stack is, <clears throat> M3 will be the, no, M1 will be the first one will be. It will be, it will be loaded M1 first. The, yeah. Which one will be completed first? M3. Full M3 will be completed 100%. Then only you can able to retrieve? M2. M2, correct? So that also we can see here. Let me run the program. Then we'll see the results. So which is the first started method? M1, main method, sorry. The main method. Mm -hmm. And then within M1, it was called M2. One second, we have not written M1 start. M1 start. Start. Yes, now let me run it again back. See now, first which method it got uh, started? Main method. Main Start. method started, correct. From main method, which method you are calling? Method one, M1. M1 got started. Just started, it's not completed basically. Do you see complete M1 here? No. Nope. After that, M2 started. It not right. completed. Just it loaded. After that, which one completed first? 
M3 was started and ended. Yes, started and completed, 100%, correct? Right. After that, which one completed? And then it just switching back M2. M2 completed. After that, which one completed? M1. Finally, which one have completed? Finally, which one got completed 100%? Okay. So you see the complete order. Right. But, okay. Which one is completed first 100%? 100% is completed M3 first. Yes. Start and, end. Mm -hmm. and then M2, second, second one, M, and then M first one. <laughs> the main one, correct? Right. So this but, is the other way it will complete by loading. But you said uh, first in, last out, right? No, yes. Last in, first out. Okay. Correct. Yes. Yes. So the last loaded method is which? Which is the last loaded method? M three. M three. If you see this order, right? Which is the first loaded one? Uh, main. Main. First loaded method, second loaded method, and last loaded method is M three only. See here, start. Which is the uh, start method? Last starting method. M3. So that is the last loaded method and that is the completed of first one. Right. Uh -huh. Start uh, right. means loaded or loading order. Right. Okay. End and means the, completing order. Right. So and then met the second method, first, but the M1 and M2 they get me a little confusion because it says starting from M3. Right, start and end. I understand that. Yes, why? Well, because M three is the last loaded. Yeah, last loaded. So and it is the first completed. Hmm. So this is called a stack. So JVM will maintain stack like this, and it will try to complete the functions. Okay. So this is called Java stack. If we go back to our picture, we will see this Java stacks. That is the purpose of Java stacks to maintain the order execution of the methods. Hmm. Okay. This is clear, right? right? Stack heap. Okay. Now go back to this method area. Method area means so whenever you are declaring a methods, right? So you will try to declare some of the variables, correct? String args. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see here, uh, if you see some of the other demos. This we don't have any overloading. Yeah, here we will see more. See here, what we are doing? You are declaring a variables, right? Methods, correct? Mm -hmm. So inside the method, you are um, declaring some of the variables. So see here, it is int. Mm -hmm. It's a method and it is a variable, correct? Right. So all these variables will be saved into this particular area method area so these methods will be executed over here so these methods will be saved in this track and it will be executed over here okay we need to execute the method right we need to take each time one method and we have to execute it right right so we we are going to remove one method from here and we are going to execute here right so, so this is called it doesn't follow by the sequence. It, it, it will remove by, by using that sequence only, like first in last or sequence only. It will take one method from the stack and it will execute it. And after that, it will take another method and it will execute it. Right. So this is the area where the method will be executed. And the corresponding fields or objects will be there under heap. Heap, right. Correct? Mm hmm so far it's clear right okay uh, java can you repeat the java stack again sorry the java stack so this is java stack is a simple if you see here yeah that's last right. in first out right the last method got loaded so that will be completed and then it will go back to the previous loaded method again like that it will keep on going to the previous executed method it will try to complete it right so that is a stack basically stack it's kind of small you can you can assume a biscuit packet so we are going to remove one biscuit we are going to remove the biscuit from the top biscuit correct right the okay. top one then finally you are going to remove the bottom one 
So this is a kind of stack. So last in, first out. So whenever we are going to remove one one particular method, so that will be executed under method area. Okay, I can okay, I can picture it now. It's first it comes to the main method and then creating an object. After that is the whenever is loading it, it goes to the heaps and from the heaps it just uh, after that is comes to the stake stake. To yes, combo. yes. Just you can visit this example, then you will get very clear picture. First main method will be loaded. Mm -hmm. After that M1 will load. After that M2 will load. M3 will load. Finally M3 will load. But if you see the completion order, M3 will complete. M2 will complete. M1 will complete. Finally main method will be completed 100%. Right. Mm -hmm. But loading is like this. The loading is like this from top to bottom, but completion is like this. Bottom to bottom. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Now go back to one more block. So this two is clear. This three is right. clear, right? Right. Okay. So here is a PC registry, right? So if you are saving the variables, we need to save into some memory locations, right? Right. So which is having all these memory variables, memory interactions mm -hmm. so PC registries so it is coming it is having the memory locations which variable is saved into which location so it will help in that situations okay so that is the purpose of PC registries <clears throat> and you will see here the last block called native method stacks native method means I told you initially Java is using C language correct to get the memory locations and all, correct? Mm -hmm. It's a foreign language, right? Right. In the similar, if at all, if you want to talk with some different language like .NET, right, or C Sharp, or some different language, so that is called as a native method stacks. It's a foreign language stack. So this is a Java method area, and these are different methods. C methods, if .NET methods, it will be executed over here. This is also similar like a Java stacks, but it's a different language stacks, native method stacks. Mm -hmm. You got it, right? Right. Okay. This is basically C or any other foreign language execution stack. Okay. Say for instance, you are trying to execute one of the C programming from Java. Correct. So in that case, we need to provide some runtime libraries, right? For C supporting libraries. Correct right so we have an execution engine so it will execute that finally uh, the results say for instance if at all if you're talking with some foreign languages so we have a native method interface which will provide the all the supporting libraries like C supporting libraries it will try to get from this area okay if you are trying to execute Java methods it's well and good everything it, it is having everything it will execute this results and it will give back if you are executing some native methods then it will look for that supporting libraries in this interface you got it right mm -hmm. so finally execution engine it will execute that each line and it will give the results back to you so that is the purpose of execution engine it will execute each line inside the method hmm. and it will give the results back and whenever you are trying to execute any native methods then it will look for some dependent libraries the foreign languages C or .NET or C++ or any other languages then it will look for that dependent libraries in this area native method libraries native method means foreign languages not Java other languages right Mm -hmm. So now you <clears throat> understand, right? All the blocks, right? So uh, method native is just a more of a uh, substitute uh, yes. language, like a jar folder that you needed to needed to <coughs> run. Yes, exactly. Okay. <coughs> um, execution engine is just a direct one. So if you explain this much, right? Some people will ask, can you explain me JVM? Most of the people don't know this architecture at all. Even though they are having 5, 10, 10 years of experience, 
they we, they don't know J, they know jvm means java virtual machine uh, that's all they don't know like uh, this many blocks is there this blocks will perform this kind of tasks okay so the the interview question will be what is the jvm right they will ask if they will ask what is jvm then you write these blocks and explain this many blocks is there and this is the function of each block then they will not ask you anything Hmm. Okay. This is clear, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, I will explain you <coughs> one simple. I um, mean, um, point or stack. Stack also it is having some memory, right? it cannot hold unlimited memory correct it is it may have 100 methods maximum maybe 200 300 correct right like this it cannot hold unlimited methods correct mm -hmm. for everything there is a certain limit correct right for everything there is a certain limit maybe 1000 methods 2000 or 10000 or 1 lakh or 1 million 1 billion something like there is a some limit there is no unlimited uh, storage correct right there is a limit say for instance if you are, if you are trying to store unlimited what will happen say from say for instance you are calling m3 m3 is the final from m3 you are not calling anything say for instance from i'm calling m1 what will happen now let me run does it will work or not it failed why right? hmm. can you guess see here what is the error why? okay the exception is thread main <coughs> low error stack overflow error meaning what is happening here you know here you know from M1, from M3, what I am trying to call? Only one line I added. If the program got uh, broken. From M3, what I am trying to call? M1. Okay, it will go to M1, correct? Right. From M1, what I am trying to call? I'm going to call M2. M yeah, M2. So and then from uh, is coming back to M3. So that's why it get um, it lost the limitation of the execution, right? Yes, the stack is not able to hold unlimited data. It is having certain limit. Then finally, what is failing? Stack is overflow. Hmm. Meaning it is can able to hold uh, 10, 100 methods, but you are trying to store more than 100. So overflow, right? Mm -hmm. It's unlimited kind of infinite loop is forming here. Right. So what would be the, if for this execution, what would be the best? So when you are writing the program, we have to find out this kind of infinite loops. So we should not call here. Don't call the upper method. Try to call some new method. So this is a one way to identify the Anyway, we have exception that time you will see more about. So you asked right previously if you call M1, what will happen? So that's what that time I didn't explain. Okay. So it is creating infinite loop. It is trying to reload again and again, right? Same method. So it is causing infinite loop and uh, it's not able to perform the operation. So it will fail. Stack is not able to hold that much data. Right. Clear, right? Mm -hmm stack is having a certain limit of memory it doesn't have infinite uh, limit of memory so it will fail <coughs> okay it's clear right jvm right. Mm -hmm. so what i will do i will send you this image this yeah. image and uh, this simple program and you can practice it you can remove add and so that you will get more picture Okay. This program also clear, right? Right.
if you want to add one more method you have to write new method and you have to add it here if you are trying to call some existing method what will happen it will form infinite loop you will try to repeat here and here and here and here correct okay. and the stack will be you will get overflow okay 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 fine so okay we will connect uh, on tomorrow yeah i can take class on tomorrow yeah fine no problem tomorrow we'll connect uh, uh, same day okay okay same time okay sure okay okay fine yeah thanks yeah bye thank you yeah. Yeah.